Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to the RMFC channel. I am joined by Matty today, no Ben. Um, he is a little bit busy tonight, got some stuff on, so it's just me and Matty. How's it going, bud? You all right? Yeah, it's going all right, mate. It's just too bloody warm. It's too hot. Oh my God, it's so hot, isn't it? I know. It is so warm. I think today in Borough, it was like... 32, 33 degrees, someone said. Yeah, I don't, I do not cope well with heat. So, like, this day has been traumatic for me yeah. to say the least. But. I mean, I was, I was in work and the temperature, like, with the aircon on, I was like, oh, this is all right. Went outside. I felt like I was in Rome again. It just like hit you. Oh, on yeah. The and I was like, what I went to, I went to the Sainsbury's across the road from old college. And um, literally, we're in Sainsbury's, aircon's on, everything's, everything's cushy. You walk out and it's the exact same feeling as you, as you walk off a plane going on holiday. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 it's just mad, isn't it? I know the borough yeah. players are in Portugal at the minute, but to be fair, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's been no difference, really. That, yeah. Can I say before we begin, that video of Matt Crooks' video diary is already, <laughs> already legendary. No, it's... Do, do you know what's reminded me of? What? Do you, do, you remember, do you remember back in the day when Ben Gibson did that Snapchat takeover? Oh, the takeover and he goes up to Brad Guzan. Guzan! Oh my god, that is that, that was that was absolutely that, that's jokes, video, that. That. that was jokes. That was I still jokes. go back and watch that sometimes. Every now and again. So funny. <laughs> what a guy. What an absolute hero. Um but yeah, let's the, there's been plenty of stuff going on this week again. Oh, um which is why we keep doing these episodes, because I think mean, during the transfer window you could never run out of stuff to talk about. Oh, no. um, so we will jump job at the, the end of the day. In. Um, so the first bit of news, a little bit um, dubious as to how credible this is, but apparently we were reported to be interested in young Everton striker Ellis Sims. Um, now, I don't know too much about him, um, apart from that he's quite highly rated at Everton, um, youth player. He's only 21. Um, so like I say, when it comes to bringing in strikers, um, undoubtedly we want squad depth, but Chris Wilder wants to bring in quality at the top end of the championship. So there's got to be a mixture of taking a little bit of a risk but proven quality at the same time. And if that was me to bring a player in like that, I'd rather just give Josh Corburn the, the opportunity. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To yeah. Him and do well. I, I don't, I wouldn't quite understand that signing. I don't know about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd certainly trust someone like Coburn more, considering A, his track record already, and B, the fact that we know we can trust him. Like, bringing in a young striker is always a risky move. And especially from, you know, coming down from a Premier League club like Everton. Like, if we if we brought him in, uh, as I said, I wouldn't really understand it, because we've got a young striker there who we know is reliable. But whereas if we bring this guy in, we can't guarantee he's going to be reliable. And then that might leave Josh Coburn not playing, which, you know, wouldn't be ideal for anybody. Yeah, but, I mean, we, we've seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag with this one, I think. Yeah, we've seen it with, we've seen it with Balogun last season. And mm. you know, it takes time to integrate the player into the squad, get used to the area, to a different area. Whereas, like I said, the likes of Josh Coburn, everyone knows what he's about. He's already proven it. You know, he scored, I still, you think he scored like four, five league goals last season. Scored oh, his goal to game ratio was absolutely stunning. Yeah, and he, he got like, that um, cracking goal against Tottenham. He's, so he's done it on the state. He's done it, hasn't he? Oh, no, yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't really make oh, sense. I love him, mate. Yeah, it's, I've only seen this one tonight. I'm going to be honest. I've only, I've only seen this bit of news tonight. And again, we can't really. We can't tell you how credible the source is mm. or like how, you know, reliable it is. But, you know, we, it's football, you know, you're going to get some. But, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, I've only seen this tonight and I saw it and I was scratching my chin a little bit. So I'm a bit, you know, I'm a bit sceptical as you are. But, yeah. yeah. Like we'll, said, see, we'll see what happens with it. Any further developments, you know, we'll keep you up to date. So. Yeah. But, I mean, whoever it is that's coming in, they're playing in an absolutely banging away kit. The uh, oh. that was that was released um, last weekend, um, and words can't describe how sex sexy that it's, is. It's it's, so it's, nice. it's sexy. It's very sexy. It is. And like I think 
It rem- you know, I think, you know, as far as kits go, we all saw the reaction to the home one. Yeah, if it, it was yeah, a bit... I horrible, think horrible, everybody didn't like the home one. I did see on Facebook the other day a woman got a home shirt delivered without the borough badge on, which was quite, oh, you know, yeah, weird. That was on Facebook, wasn't yeah. it? Like a shirt everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> Was, yeah, like a woman got the borough kit delivered without the borough badge on. That must have been a that, copy. How do you forget yeah, the badge that, on? Unless it was like, unless it, she actually just got one that just forgot to put the badge on and she can just keep it as like a collector's like, like How does that even, know? I don't know how that, it, like surely they're all made with the borough badge on and if you want a name yeah. card, that's when stuff like that gets put on after. I, I didn't think the, put the badge on like with, no, I'll tell you what. If she's fo- if she if she's gone to the length of photoshopping it just for attention on Facebook, then could you imagine? You know. <laughs> it looked like she'd done a pretty good job if it was. Well, yeah, yeah. We all saw the reaction to the home kit. Not many people were happy with it. A lot yeah. of people just thought it was just very simple and there was nothing to it. But the, I think area, look, fair play to them. They've redeemed themselves. Yeah, with the away kit. Sense. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and I must I'm, say as well. Oh, go on. I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. You know, horrible. But charging 75 quid for that training hoodie in the Borough Club shop. Don't. The, like, the, the jacket is, I think yeah. it's like 35 online without the badge, but it's 95 in the club shop with the Borough badge on. Which mm. is... That, mur- that really- murky green jacket. That like murky swampy green jacket. Yeah. Right, I love that colour and I love wearing that colour. I was actually going to go and get it, but my dad was like, 75 quid, you're having a laugh. I was like, yeah, forget it then. Like, I get that it's, I get that it's, you know, quite, you know, thingy to make and all that, but you've got to think, like, 75 quid for a, a jacket. I think, to be- I, I, there's a bit of me that thinks, originally, I don't think they were going to put it for that much, like, not as high as 75. I don't think I've ever seen anything as high as 75 in the club shop. Um and for it to be more... I'm just, I'm just going off. I'm just going off a screenshot sure. I saw on Twitter. I'm just going off a screenshot I saw on Twitter of, like, this training jacket thing. Yeah, like yeah. The, you know, hooded jacket. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure if it's just everyone was complaining about it. I saw quite a few people. So, like, if I'm wrong, guys, I'm sorry if I'm wrong. No, I've seen but, it. Like, that's, just what, that, that's just what I've seen. Yeah. Like, it's like, I think that I, I kind of get... If it is, if it is quite expensive, I can get why they're doing it. Because, obviously, like, the reaction at the home kit wasn't the best. Yeah. And I think that they are obviously thinking, right, I don't think many people may like the home kit and they kind of want to make the money back. But, you know, that's a whole different thing. But yeah, the away kit, beautiful, beautiful bit of clubber. Really? I must say so. Like, yeah. It's a beautiful design and I love the colours as well. You know, yeah. I think it's, I think it's not, automatic- I haven't even wore it yet and it's automatically gone into my top three favourite away kits of all time. So, you know, it's, it's, I mean, that's you know, it's, it's gone that high. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, if you want to know what my other two are, uh, it's the 2014-15 uh, one with the illuminous yellow and the blue and oh, black. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then my other one is the one from when we were in the Premier League where it's got, like, the blue and the dark, the different, like, shades oh, of blue. Really? Yeah, I love that oh, one. Whoa. I, like, I like the 96-97 uh, work it. Yeah, mate. I'm d- Unreal. I, 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 I don't know if anyone's noticed, this, but I wasn't around to see them. I wasn't. I was like, <laughs> like minus four, minus five, but like <laughs> I've seen it and I'm like, why have I not? I've seen them. Yeah, my dad's got a few of them, but like wearing them, I was like, how do you wear these? Yeah, like, they, they were like baggy them. back in the day. Yeah, they're like dresses. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm definitely buying that away kit, one hundred percent. Oh yeah. In fairness, if if you see me on the Boris Facebook page being the first person in the line to get it, please don't be surprised. Yeah. I did see there was a guy at 2am queuing to get the home one. Like, you have to have commitment for that. Yeah, isn't that a nice design shirt guy? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I've seen it. I saw it briefly it's when we were so on. Absolute yeah. hero he is. Absolute hero. Um, Shout out to him, mate. Shout out yeah, to him. Yeah, definitely. Um, but back on to players then. Um, obviously, we were... You spoke about in the last episode um, about us being linked with David McGoldrick. Now, he ended up signing for... Yeah, it's gone well, man, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I really did genuinely think that he, we'd sign him. I thought the people saying that they didn't want to sign him, I, I didn't... 
really understand it. All right. We're You're all right, good. mate. We're all right. Yeah, I'm just not the. Uh, it's just not the audience. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> um, On for the bloopers. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I thought, well, I was surprised that people saying they wouldn't want to sign him. I know he's 34, but, you know, give him a year's deal. He, give you, he offers this, you that something different. Um, he makes, yeah. runs in behind. He links up play. But no, he ended up he ended up signing for Derby. Um, he did come to Rockcliffe and speak to Wilder. But I think a lot of it came down to Wilder not guaranteeing him uh, game time. And I think, yeah. it, you know, the, that for him, coming towards the end of his career, he probably wants to play as much as he can and just enjoy it. Um, and uh, he probably yeah. didn't feel like he could do that at Borough. I think that a player of his age, like you know, coming towards the end of his career, I think a move to Derby is quite a decent move for him. To be I think fair. It make, yeah, it makes sense for him. And yeah, like it makes sense for a player of that, of that, like of this age, like going mm. to a club like Derby, League One, where I, I dare say, but you know what I mean, a little bit more relaxed and like you know stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a good move for him. Obviously, with Mister Chance getting in. Um, but yeah, you know, you can't guarantee players game time anytime, you know, because you know it, injuries could come around the corner, and like, you could say, yeah, you're gonna be, you know, you know, on FIFA career mode, waiting to choose them, they're gonna be starting every yeah, game, yeah, yeah, they're gonna yeah. be doing this and that. You could say that to them, but then you know, you you never you don't know what's gonna happen in two three weeks. Exactly. Like, and I kind of I kind of think that I do think that whilst we have lost a good opportunity here, I do think that it's a good move for him to go to a club like Derby. You know, and I'll, I'll keep a keep I'll keep an eye out on him as well. Yeah, see how he does. So. Keep, yeah, look out throughout the season. Um, but the, there was another striker um, that we've obviously mentioned previously as well, um, Dwight Gale. He yes. was obviously oh. he was offered to the Borough, um, but we said that it's got to be financially right. You know, he's on decent wages at Newcastle. And by the sounds of things, they kind of want him at the book, off the books. They don't really see him having a future at the at Newcastle. Um, but his family's in the northeast. He wants to stay in the northeast. So, I mean, all of that was kind of pointing to it. It kind of makes sense a deal like that happening. Um, you know, he's in his early thirties, um, but he's got plenty of experience. You know, he'll get your goals. His championship record speaks for itself. However, there was news that came out today. We're recording this on a Monday, just so you know, you've got a time scale. Um, and it came out today that apparently our interest is being cooled because um, Steve Gibson is not the biggest fan. He doesn't really want to sanction a move and he's not really fancy in signing players over 30. Yeah, I don't. If you're listening on the podcast, then you can somehow miraculously see what I'm doing right now. Uh, um, I've got my head in my hands because I, I saw I saw first we were linked with Dwight Gale and I was like, please, 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 can this go through and can we get this man? I have always been an admirer of Dwight Gale, up to, going back to West Brom and probably even before that. Oh yeah, when he was at Palace. Like, yeah, even then, you know, a hell of a striker, like was a, a great striker, and I think that. It all made sense. His family were in the northeast. He openly said he wanted to stay here. You know, we look like a perfect destination for him. But I just think that why would you? I yeah, I get where Steve Gibson's coming from, but at the same time, why? Like a player doesn't have to be under thirty to be a good player. Like you know what I mean? Johnny Housen, prime example. Prime example. Exactly. Like. You know, I would have taken Dwight Gale any day of the week. And I just think that nah, we've just missed a, missed a phenomenal opportunity. I think, I think most just, people would, to be fair. I think that we are... We, we see every day on Twitter, you know, we're all linked with this, we're all linked with him, we're all linked with him. You know, we're linked with every person and their brother at the moment. Like, but, you know, we just seem to see them now slipping and slipping and slipping. Yeah, it does more seem... More and more. Uh, it does seem that and, like. I think, you know, we've only... How many signings have we made? Has it only been about... How many is it? Three or four? Three. Um, yeah, three and then the house and con- contract yeah. extension. Like, considering how many we're linked with and what Wilder has said that he wants to do in this window, like, 
I'm not being horrible, but we need to up our game a little bit. Mm. Like, we need to start seriously, seriously looking because it's all right being linked with people, but you've got to actually act on it. And I think that's just not what we're doing at the moment. And we, you know, to have only three three signings when Wilder was going on literally on the last game, like, oh, I'm going to go, go ham in this transfer window and I'm going to get all, like, loads of places I've got my eye on. And, you know, it's just. Yeah, it's just kind of a chin scratching moment, and you're thinking, "Well, this isn't really going to plan, is it?" But you know, you know, we've still got a little bit of time. We've still got a little bit of time. This could all change, and I could look like an utter mug in about a week's time. <laughs> but, but yeah, but at the time being, it just doesn't look promising. So yeah, it's one of them. It's a balance between um, it's a balance between patience, and then kind of not letting your targets slip away. But I do think the Spence saga has got a lot to answer for. Yeah. Um. I think once that is done and it's over the line, just get that done. Uh, like, I think as soon as that's done, that done, it'll as be like soon a, as possible. Yeah. I spoke to Ben last week and I said to Ben that it. I think after that it will be like a domino effect. I think we'll we'll make yeah. the standings will come thick and fast after that until the end of the window. But I do think that is a bit of a stumbling block. Um, right. If if Chris Wilder is somehow miraculously laid on his sofa on Wednesday night when this goes out or whenever with the RMSC YouTube channel on his iPad, obviously, and he's watching this, please sell Spence as quickly as possible. Take the money, put it in the bank account, and get the signings in. Please, mate. I love you. I really do. But just please get the Spence transfer over the line. I'm sick of seeing it everywhere. Oh, the, the Tottenham Tottenham increased their bid, but it's not good enough. Tottenham do this, Tottenham do that. Yes, they're doing it. Just sign the bloody man. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, I've gone, on a, I've gone on a rant. No, to be fair, if this... Was... There's, one, there's one for TikTok, ladies and gentlemen. Clip it. Oh, 100%. If this goes live on the Wednesday and then... All of the movement happens on the Thursday. I'm claiming that like this was you, this was all you. Yeah, and then I'm gonna go into hiding and never show my face in Borough Town Centre <laughs> yeah. again. So, no, you know. no. Everyone will be clipping you for rage, transfer rage. Yeah, I hope to God this gets clipped because I'll share it myself. So, <laughs> yeah. If we could, when this is done, not to editors. If you could clip that and send it to us, that'd be great. <laughs> um, but another striker that used to play for the club and that has been rumoured yeah. is Jordan Rhodes. Um, apparently, we are still interested in signing him. However, Huddersfield's asking price is too high at the minute. And from what I've seen, with their manager obviously leaving, Corberon, Corberan, um, with him leaving, apparently it, it strengthened... Um, his likelihood of actually staying at Huddersfield, and with yeah. with um, Gibson saying about not signing anyone over thirty, if he went and signed Rhodes, that completely contradicts what he'd said in the first place. So yeah, I just I, I can't see that deal being done either. Um, yeah, I love I love Jordan Rhodes. You know, I always have. Um, obviously, when he was here last time. You know, that, all I'm going to say is ball on away. Oh, God. So, That's all you know. What a day that was. That's all yeah, you, like, what, you know, I think that, you know, there's always that idea of players being past their best uh, and like that. And I think that Huddersfield is probably, if he's going to stay there, then, you know, that's that's fine by me. You know, bringing Jordan Rhodes in again would be a risk, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I love the lad. But, like, I think he served my dad a pint in the Dickens once when that was his first job. Fun fact yeah. for you. Um, but um, yeah, I think that you know them saying the price is too high, obviously shows that they value him a lot at that football club. And yeah. you know, I think that he has to, if he's going to stay there, it's not the end of the world. Quite frankly, yeah. you know, he's he can you know carry on there. You know, I've said it, we're, we're linked with every other striker under the sun anyway. So you know, it's it's yeah, it's a mixed bag for John Rose. I, as much as I'd like to see him back on a personal level. On a football level, I don't think it would be right if we did. And but the fact that Huddersfield are asking for a lot of money just says all you need to know anyway, really. 
yeah, I think that's the the big thing for me as well. I think if it was for the right price, then by all means, it like it makes sense. He's a player that I know people going about his record, but he does get goals at important stages of either a game or the season. Um, and like I say, without his goals that season, we wouldn't have gone up. Um, so I, mm-hmm. I do think that's a big factor. But if they want two, three, four million or whatever it is for him, then there's just no way that it's going to happen. Um, yeah, it's. But yeah, obviously Huddersfield will want to. Huddersfield will want to keep him if they're going to try and you know push next year as well. Yeah, if they want, if they like, want anywhere gonna, near, they they'll want to push as a club. They'll want to be up there, and in their minds, they will see Jordan Rhodes as a critical part of that uh, on the you know as the striker. Yeah, the so I can see where them. Huddersfield are coming from. Absolutely, yeah. I can see where Huddersfield are coming from here. But I mean, another striker once again that's been causing. We love a striker, we do. We do, we really, really do. We just either don't seem to sign them or when we do, they just turn out to be flops. Um, <laughs> but we were, well, there's loads of saga surrounding him that went on for ages last season, and that is Rodrigo Muniz. Now, he's sparked saga once again and a little bit of craziness from the Borough fans. Because um, he he tweeted the uh, eyes emoji, you know when someone when a player does that, it's like a moving club or do you know what I mean? It's like speculation around what he's doing next. I'll um, never forgive him if he's just trolling us all. But then he went he's and liked, like he liked um, Burroughs, I think it was the home kit announcement, and when um, they were in Portugal, and then someone tweeted or commented on that post and said oh it'd be nice if Borough could take a striker to Portugal and he'd liked a random fan's tweet so he might be there for all we know he might be so there's like, been loads of um obviously rumors about him possibly being there and why would he do that I mean for all we know he could literally just be taking the mick out of us like once again he might be yeah bored. and then we all just look like what I'm yeah, he, he might be there. bored and he's gone all right then, like I'll I'll put this out or I'll like a couple of tweets and make Borough fans go crazy again like they did last season. Um, mm. But I mean, he's a quality player. There's no there's no denying. Oh, that. I think last season it didn't go, um, like he didn't score as many goals as he'd have probably liked to. But when you've got Mitrovic scoring like forty plus goals, there's just absolutely no way that you're going to get into the side ahead of him. Um, Especially the system yeah. that Michael Silva was playing when you're playing one striker. So, I, I, I mean, they've just gone up and five subs. So, I thought that they maybe, maybe kept him. But I think if they, if they could loan him out to us, if we could get a deal where... We, I, I don't think it'll be a permanent. But I think if we could get a loan deal for him, I think that would be a, a brilliant signing. I really, really do. Like I said, the, there was clearly quality there and we wanted him last season. Um yeah, I think that'd be a brilliant, brilliant signing. If, like yeah. I say, the rumours are true. If he's not trolling us, then yeah, one hundred percent. But if he's being, if he is trolling us, and he's just messing us all about, one fair play to you, mate, because you've hoodwinked us all. <laughs> yeah, but, he's got us all. But, but then, but then I'd still be angry at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's it it is what it is. We'll see what happens. Obviously, yeah. we, we we only get the bare bones of the news, like the. Like we could go off record tonight, and like we could get a tweet saying, "Oh, he is there. He's signed." Yeah. And we we ju- again just look like utter mugs. We look like dials. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, we don't know. We don't know. But you know, we seem to be linked with all strikers at the moment. Every single striker in the in the world, apart from Ronaldo, of course. Obviously. But but yeah, um, yeah, it's. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Exactly, it's a watch this kind of watch this space, isn't it? Kind of, kind of thing. Um, but once again, another striker. Um, another one. Another one. Another oh, one. Oh god! Not another. Get, get one. the DJ Khaled meme. <laughs> another one. Um, the Adam Armstrong, the Southampton striker. Um, obviously, we know all about him. Um, brilliant championship record and to be fair he's done well at Southampton the games that he's been involved in uh, from what I've seen uh, stats don't always tell the full story in my opinion 
Um, but he's been told by Southampton that he is free to leave on loan. Now, there's an awful lot of championship interest in uh, Armstrong. So whether we'd be able to sign him or not, I've got no idea. But there's no denying that. Well, we spoke about this before we started recording. Been unbelievable signing. The the Scottish Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Is that what you're putting him down uh, as? Yeah. The dwarf. The version. Scottish Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, but about a foot smaller. But <laughs> yeah, um, I was speaking to my dad again about this. Like, my dad was like, "I would take Adam Armstrong any day of the week. I would, one hundred percent." You know, his record for Scotland as well. Like when he's playing for Scotland, is great. He's a great player, great striker, and I think he's exa- I just if we get him, please don't flop. Like I know we've got the Borough curse on strikers, but I think he would be absolutely lethal in front of net, especially in the Championship, like where he's going to want to impress, and he's you know it'll motivate him to get even higher and to go even higher with his football. Yeah, he's get John right, doesn't he? Yeah, just get him here now. That's all I'm saying. Just get, just get him a plane. I'll personally book him a plane myself. You know, just get him here now. Sign the paperwork. Bish bash bosh diddly douche. And, you know, we'll all be happy. But, yeah, again, watch this space. He's been told he can leave on loan. That's going to obviously warrant a lot of clubs to go, right, you know, get, get this down, get this down. There'll be a lot of phone calls being made. But, yeah, it just depends, I think. It just depends on what, who comes in first, who has the best offer. And, again, it comes out to Adam, Adam himself on where he sees it fit to be going. So, yeah, it's exciting, this one. I hope we make some progress on it and we'll see what happens. Yeah, hopefully we can get it over the line because, like you say, it would be a, a really, really good signing. But, it, like I say, he's done well. Yeah, and I know, we, so. I know we said this about Brett Sombolonger all those years ago. Yeah. But, you know, I just hope to God. But, yeah, we, we can dream. We can dream. Exactly. Um, but we go on into pre-season as well. Um, second pre-season game against York ended in a 3-2 win um, and it was kind of a game for the youngsters wasn't it really uh, Sonny oh, Finch a field and um, Callum Kavanagh um, got mm. two as well um, so both of them scoring decent goals as well Finch's was yeah. a, a tap in um, but Cav, uh, Cal Cav scored two really good goals and my word Riley McGree in that first half like Every chance that we created, it literally all went through him. So I think he's going to be season, crucial next season. Oh God, next yeah, next season he's going to be crucial. Vital. Yeah, like Riley McGree, one of the most exciting players I've seen recently. You know, like 100%. and if he performs like that next season, like and he you know gets that link up with Tav and all that we've talked about it before. Honestly, he could be a massive part of this side next season. Well, he is going to be a massive part of this side next season. Like he, if we end up challenging and we end up doing it, he's going to be a massive part of it. You know, he's got class coming out his ears. That as just look at that first half. I was watching it, and I, I was at work at the time. I was on my break and I was frantically trying to find a stream. But yeah, it was. I was watching him. And I was like, this man is special. This man is special. And like again, the youngsters showing. Why, why they want to be a part of the squad, why, why they want to come up and, you know. But I was speaking again, I, I was speaking to somebody about this and I was thinking, why are we going after all these players from other clubs when you've just got youngsters that we already have who can easily just come up and try and prove their worth? And it, I suppose it's a valid point in some ways. Wait, when you think, oh, why are we going after all these senior players from different clubs when we've got, you know, strikers already at the club who are a little bit younger? Yeah. It's, it's, I guess it's a valid it argument in some ways. It's a, like you said, it's a balancing act, isn't it? And I was reading yeah. a, an article from the Gazette um, while they're talking about, you know, about integrating the youngsters and how they're, how they're doing and whether there's a chance of them playing next season. And he said he doesn't want to completely shut them down or shut them off from having that chance. But he says, look, I'm looking at players that are going to, take us to the Premier League that you know they've got to be of a certain quality and if I don't see that that quality like it you know in these next few weeks then there's going to be limited chances because he's kind of set the bar really for quality um and I think he's obviously trialing them now because they've all you know if they play well they've got every right like as I Jones did last season 
um, to be there or thereabouts and, to, you know, to be involved. Um, whereas you might see some of them and go, you know, actually, they'd be better off gaining more experience by going out on loan um, and, you know, doing it that way. But you, you never know. You never know. Someone, some of them might, like I say, if, if Kyle Cav keeps putting, he's genuinely, for me, I love one of the most ex- exciting young players that we've got in... I've, know, I've always rated him. Coburn, him and Josh Coburn are literally the future. Yeah, I've I've always rated him from what I've seen. Like I went to go and see some, you know, some matches of the under twenty threes and all that. You know, I like to go around and watch a few of them. And like Cal Cav, I think he scored a penalty on that night. Or I think he did, uh, or something. But even throughout the game, he just looked dangerous. Like the runs he was making and stuff. And we saw him like he's he's coming to the squad and against York. And he's thinking right, these are the, these are the first team players I'm playing alongside them. I'm going to want to put in a good performance here, put a good word in for myself. Yeah. My God, he did it. Yeah. Like, well, you know, Cal Cav is definitely a player for the future. I love Cal Cav, so... 100%. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely one to watch, like... So then, we move on to um, Kieran Clark, who we were linked with um, quite a few times. We were linked with him, I think it was in January we were linked with him. Um, I think Wilder was quite quite Queen? Quite Queen? Uh, quite key on quite queen. He is a queen. He is a queen. Um, he's a king. He's a royal. Quite, he's a royal figure. He is. He was quite keen um, on a move for the Newcastle centre back, um, but he, to be fair, he rejected us in January, and and I don't think a lot of people rate him. A lot of Newcastle fans don't rate him. They yeah. said that they'd give him a lift to Borough if we really wanted him that bad. <laughs> so. What happened there was he's set for a Sheffield United medical. Um, mm. Now, this is the other day. I don't know if there's been any other movement. I haven't seen it as of yet. I haven't seen anything, though. No. But um, I don't think too many people are, are sad to see that one go through. Yeah, it's a, the fact that his own club's fans are not really rating him says a lot. Like, it's... You know, it, it's not nice when your fans don't really like you, but it, I guess it's just football in it. Like, you, I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know, look at Aaron Connolly last season. God bless the lad. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? But yeah, it's it. You know, it's yeah. It, it, I'm not sure. I, as you said, people aren't exactly going to be upset by this. No, not but, at all. I think yeah, we move on. Probably nice. We move on. Nice te- for everyone. Um, and you know what? We will just move straight on because. To be fair, like I said, I don't, I don't think many people listen to this section and go, oh, I'm absolutely good. Can you hear my dog's back in there? Yeah, it's all good, mate. Right, okay. Um, right. Apologies, guys. Just I have a mental, mental dogs. We've had a lot of technical stuff going on, haven't we? Yeah, it's, it, that's, just, that's, just, that's just this industry. That's please. Zoom. That's Zoom for you. Um, so apologies if you can all hear bits and pieces in between. Um, yeah, we, we do have other people living with us, and we do have like we do have stuff happening. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but moving on to some, some more positive news, some really really interesting news actually. Kind of came up out of the blue. We we were one of the first ones to report it. Um, after seeing it in uh, an article over in Italy. Um, and that was the well. Initially, we were interested in uh, Venezia striker Thomas Henry, or I think it's pronounced Henri because he is French. And oh, really? I say that, yeah. So I mean, if he's anything like that player, then you know, I, I think everyone can be happy with that. Um, but it quickly moved from it being interested and trying to convince him to come to England within a couple of hours, um, to then. Was apparently making a seven point six million pound bid. Poor oh. striker. Now seven point six million. That's a lot of at money. Championship level is not cheap by any stretch. Um, that is a lot of money. And yep. for me, well, I put out a tweet earlier. I said if that, you know, doesn't scream, um, that the Spence deal's nearly done. I don't know what does because I don't know where else we get that much to spend on one player um, I know a lot of the signings that we've made are going to be free or on a loan so maybe they've kind of lumped it on, on him 
Um, I think he, from what I've heard, um, he was a standout performer last season for Venezia. Um, they were a team that got relegated, but he managed nine goals, three assists in Syria. Um, and his shot conversion rate, I think um, shots on target were something like 85%, and the shot conversion rate was 82%. 83%, which, to be fair, is quite high in terms of the amount of shots that he was having um, and the service that he was receiving. So it's it's one of them where he, he's a type of striker I wouldn't expect Wilder to sign. He's quite yeah. um, a bit of a unit. He's tall, but it, it's, his, it's his shooting. He's got a hell of a, hell of a shot on him. So it, it is quite an interesting... Um, Interesting purchase, especially like I say, a bit out the blue, a bit under the radar. No one's really you wouldn't have heard of him before this unless you watched the Syria, Syria. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, Jordan lovely promoting himself, saying that he does his research there, <laughs> flexing the fact that he does his research. Fair play to him. <laughs> um, but yeah, if he's anything like certain other players who are also conveniently called on re. Then this could be this could be very very interesting. Seven point six million is a lot of money. It is, and like as as you said, especially at championship level, and like if um if Jed Spence deal is now close, and that's where we're getting this money from, or we, we're ironing up the money because we know that it's close. Mm. Like this could be very interesting. Like I have not seen like for a club that's just got relegated from Serie A. To, like to say, all right, we're gonna go with seven point six million. Like, hello, <laughs> like that's speaks yeah, volume. It's not. It's not. A, it's not like, a cheap amount. I think the yeah. only the only downside to the deal is he prefer. It, it's not completely off. It's not ruled out. But it, the player does prefer a move. Uh, or he, he prefers to stay in Italy. I think it's no. uh, Rona uh, or the other team that are like front runners for the deal, but. I think it, it's whether we can outbid them, really. I think if Venezia, they've just gone down, they'll want as much money as possible. I, I think I don't think they'll be too bothered where the player goes as long as they get a decent amount of money for him. So if we can somehow outbid Verona, then th- we've got every chance of him, him moving here. But like I say, it's whether he'd want to move to England and whether we could convince him to do that. Yeah, we'll just have to just have to wait and see what happens in terms of Roma and everything. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's an interesting one. One to keep your eye on, definitely. Um, but another actual addition. Um, and no, it's not a player signing, but um, Dr. Brian English, um, who worked with the club for years, um, has returned to the club, um, in the last few days, uh, just to join the backroom staff. And for me. It's another brilliant, underrated like signing, if you like. Like I say, yeah. he well, he he's just spent two years with Brendan Rodgers at uh, Leicester as their head of medicine. So you know, he's another another um, person that's going to be added to the backroom staff. That's just going to give Wilder like all that knowledge and you know everything he needs to know. He can go to these professional that all kind of expertise in their own field of work, but that's straight away it's going to benefit Chris Wilder and the players. Um, the more people you've got looking into um, the players and the recovery after games, and you know, if someone's injured, you don't ask the player, "Are you okay to play?" You speak to the professionals in that in that industry and go. No, I'll tell you if you fit or not to play, um, and that's where we'll see or getting the most out of every single player next season. Mm-hmm. So I think I, I think that's a really underrated bit of business. That yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome back, Brian. Hundred um, percent. And a couple of last couple of bits of news that you know we added them on just before we joined uh, joined the call today. Uh, Borough are reportedly interested in signing a uh, midfielder and currently free agent, Aaron Moy. Um, mm. Now, Aaron Moy obviously was a huge player for Huddersfield, um, especially in their promotion season. 
um, spent quite a few years out uh, at Huddersfield. They ended up signing for a Chinese team, uh, Shanghai Port FC. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and he's been there, I think it was just the year, but he's left this season, free agent. I think that, for me, I don't think that's a bad signing. I really don't. No, no that'd be a class signing. I think you know, he's, look got, at he's track, got a wealth of experience, record, hasn't he, in the Champions League? His track record with, with Huddersfield speaks for itself. Like, if we can get a player like Aaron Moyen, who we know has proven championship experience and like has experience of getting out of this league the right way, and, like, you know, he, looking back when he played for Huddersfield, he was a decent player. Like, he was actually a decent player. And so, yeah, I think that if we could get him, especially now he's a free agent, it'd be, be a bargain, pretty much. Just get him, get that extra extra man and get that extra bit of experience in and a man who knows this league. It would be, I think it would benefit a lot of people. Yeah, so, 100%. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm especially with the, five, with the five subs as well. You've then got mm. that rotation, haven't you, in the midfield... You've got Tav McGree, Crooks, and then, like you say, if Moy was to come in, that's valuable squad depth that could even probably do... We, I mean, he's he's more creative midfielder, but he could probably do a job um, in place of Housen, um, yeah. which is really another role that we need to fill as backup because, like we said before, we can't rely on Housen as much as we have done in previous seasons. Yeah. Um, but it does lead us on to the next last bit of news, which, if he's coming in, in my opinion, frees up a move for Martin Piero, who oh. has been linked. Well, well, he's been linked throughout this um, transfer window. There's been a lot of speculation as to whether he's staying, whether he's going, what's happening. He's not out there in Portugal with the lads at the moment. Um, and it has been said by numerous reporters in South America that he will join Boca Juniors this summer. Um, it'll be a season-long loan, and they will have the option to buy at, come the end of his, his loan, um, And which really bugs me as well as an additional little bit where there'll be no loan fee. Um, oh. I mean, that's the, that's the case with a lot of, well, most loans. It's very rare that you pay a loan fee for a player. Um, yeah. But it just feels wrong. It it just... Well, I'll put uh, it, to it, out. it It doesn't make... For me, it doesn't make sense for anyone, like any party. Piero said he wants to stay. He wants to prove himself in England. He wants to prove himself at this club and help us get promoted. Those words have come out of his mouth, by the way. Like, exactly. Like on a South American TV show, yeah. uh, on live TV. Um, so he stated that. Um, it sort of feels him, like we bought him for been, like five, six million. Like it's not yeah. even. And he's had one year. He's had one year where he's barely played that much football through injury and through getting used to the league. Feels like we made this investment knowing it was a it was a long term project. It was a long term investment in a player. Um, I mean, when we bought Juninho. The first season, he wasn't. We signed him for a decent amount of money. He didn't like just automatically burst onto the scene. It took him a year to get going. And Steve Gibson said that to um, Chris Wilder when he first took over. Um, so it it gave us the you know the view that all right, well, give it another a year and he'll he'll be he'll be flying. But it just feels a bit like we're giving up. It, and it feels like he Piero is being influenced on what to do more than himself is telling himself to do. A little if bit. If you understand what I mean. I think that for Piero to go on national television in South America live and for the words out of his mouth to say, I want to stay in England and prove myself in the championship and help Borough, for this then to happen sort of throws a massive spanner in the works because it's like, well, hang on, he said he wants to stay. So who is it who's telling him to leave? That's what I want to know. I just, who is it? Who? I've said it before, haven't I? I just don't think Chris Wilder rates him. I don't think. Yeah. He, I think Chris Wilder's had a look at him, a good look at him in training, um, and he. I think he's seen him and gone. How much did you pay for him? No, he's not worth that. And he's kind of gone. Look, I don't see him in my plans because he personally doesn't think he's quality. So he's 
going to offload him, give him a loan out in um, Argentina with a good side, by the way. Boca Juniors is a really good side. Um, and if he does well there, that raises his price even more. But nine times out of ten, there's always a clause in a loan to buy, like with the option, um, that normally they'll agree a fee before he goes. So whether they've looked at that and gone, look, I don't see more plans. Let's try and recoup as much money as we can. Kind of. Yeah, thing. I just see this as one thing, and that's a wasted opportunity. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I just, I just think that Payero has so much to give. It's just going to take time. Like. He, I feel as though he has the potential to be a phenomenal player in this league. He just needs yeah. time to adapt. Yeah. And I just feel as though a lot of fans and everything expect players to come to a club and expect them to gel instantly when it's not as easy as that. Yeah. And like obviously we look at Piero against Cardiff last season and all that. Yeah, he's proved he can do it. Yeah. But you know, I just think that like this is just sad for everyone involved. Like it's just sort of like a oh, it's a wasted this because he had so much potential. And now he's going. Like ugh. again, it's 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 it, it, it's a sad one. We'll see what happens with it, and we'll be back next week hopefully to update you with it if anything happens. But yeah, it's it's a bit of a bit of a bit of a blow this one. To be fair, like it's not not exactly the best. Yeah, it's another kind of watch this space, isn't it? And we've kind of yeah. ended the ended the pod on a, a sad note. But yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, it, I, I think. Linking it with the bit of news before, I think it does open. I think it's more likely Martin Piero leaves, we bring someone like Aaron Moy in. Like it kind of yeah. feels like that is lined up. But, but yeah, we'll see. Knows. We'll see what happens, and we'll update you when we know. So yeah, but no, that's gonna that's gonna wrap up um, this week's latest news episode. Um, so if you're listening on the podcasts, please give us a follow and leave a review. Just let us know what you think, because um, it really does help us and lets us know if what you're liking, what you maybe want a bit different, uh, whether you want people to stop shouting in the background, that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if, if you, you want, want if you want dogs please... to be suddenly shut up, then you know, please <laughs> yeah. say that. Yeah. Um, and if you're listening, uh, watching, sorry, on on YouTube, please subscribe. We've literally just hit 500 subscribers, so we cannot thank you enough. Um, really do appreciate it. But yeah, if you know anyone else that's not, just let them know and just tell them to subscribe. Or just take their phone and subscribe for them. Or do that, yeah. Wh- whichever. I mean, whichever. we don't recommend it, but you know, it's always a tactic, and it does help not, a lot. It's not our fault if you know. Yeah, we take no responsibility. That, no yeah, responsibility we don't want. I will accept no letters off Ather and Co. after this. No, you know? no. But yeah, that that's going to wrap it up. So have a great week, everyone. Enjoy the warm weather and the sun. And we'll see you next week. Take care. See you later.